Well, I've always been fascinated by shoes. I mean, shoes are so beautiful to look at. Uh, they're like works of art. Hey guys, bienvenue, welcome. Welcome to our place. Mashizan Mastrum is the founder and creative director of his eponymous footwear label. So I'm right now in Paris, in our showroom in Paris. Uh, this is where all the action is for our brand. So people make an appointment to come to us to, for a fitting session. Bienvenue! Hey, Welcome! Like that? Like that? Oui, oui. Like that? Mais, uh, uh, Boots? Vert. Non, vert. Okay. Ah, cool. Very nice. Uh, you can approach it gently, please. Ah, it, it looks green when and you purple. put purple. Ah, okay. So it becomes purple as well. If you are wearing blue, it becomes blue as well. Designed by a Singaporean, made in Italy, based in France. This brand is fast gaining a foothold with well-heeled fashionistas across three continents. I've been very lucky in that I've been able to tap into the ecosystem that is available here in Paris. Mashizan didn't start out in fashion. I started my career as a broadcast journalist uh, back in 1997. For almost 18 years, I was doing television documentary production. I was feeling a little bit restless around 2013. I wanted to do something that's more creative and totally different. So that's when I took a sabbatical from television and I went to Florence to study shoe designing and shoemaking. Um, and from there, the, the love affair with, uh, with shoes uh, really began. And I was trained by a former head designer of uh, Ferragamo. And she was basically my, my mentor, my tutor. And that's how I, I got started uh, in, in this whole uh, shoe designing world. Another connection would pave the way for manufacturing. You know, as a new designer, it's very, very difficult trying to get access to some of these factories. But I had the good fortune of uh, knowing, uh, getting to know someone who had worked in the shoe business for many, many decades. And it was because of her and her context that uh, lots of doors were open. He didn't take the plunge immediately. I came back to Singapore, I continued with my TV career, but I slowly started to sample my first collection and then it just grew from there. My first client, first pair was a pair of pink uh, pumps uh, with a bit of glitter at the top. Uh, I believe it was sold to an Australian client uh, who happened to be shopping in Singapore at that point in time. Mashizan's previous life still provides inspiration. So each of my collection is inspired by a documentary that I've done before. The sketching begins and then samples and prototypes are made. The label has no physical shop of its own. Online sales and trunk shows like this one in Singapore are a vital link between the designer and his customers. <laughs> If I introduce a new silhouette, then I will get feedback during the trunk shows to see whether people are happy with them or not uh, before going to production. And at our trunk show, we normally collect all the orders. So I think because it's a direct-to-consumer brand, we know exactly what they like, what they don't like. In general, we have a very high client retention rate. A lot of the times our clients they buy about three pairs per year and we have a very high repeat client rate as well. When COVID-19 hit, face-to-face -face interactions stopped for months. With shoes, you really need to touch and feel the shoes, right? And, and see how they, they work on your feet. We, tried to do Zoom sessions with clients, trying to get them to connect with us live in Paris and show them the shoes and the new collection. With pandemic restrictions easing, the label is into its seventh year with nine collections to its name. Prices start around 380 euros or about 430 US dollars a pair. When a shoe is being made in a certain part of the world, automatically the price points puts you in a certain category. I chose to produce my shoes in Florence. Naturally, I put myself in the position where it's all about quality and, and, and in the luxury space.
His shoes have been worn by Hollywood celebrities and seen on the runways of New York and Singapore. What's next? We're hoping to, to explore the possibility of doing a diffusion uh, line. It's a secondary line that targets a younger, more affordable crowd, perhaps. Yep, yep. Uh, you can never be 100% perfect, right? I measure success by the growth of the brand over the years, the amount of sales that we make, by the joy that the shoes uh, give to the customers. 